The Bloody Revolution is the method shown by the Communists by Lenin. Turning streets into war zones, attacking the security forces and public assets, resorting to acts of provocation to instigate clashes and imposing revolution by, according to his own mind, inciting fear and concern in people are the methods shown by the Russian revolutionary Vladimir Lenin and deliberately applied by communists. Anarchy and terror are indispensable for communism. Lenin says the following to his followers. In principle, we have never rejected terror and we will never deny it. At a particular moment of clashes, a particular situation of the military forces and under certain conditions, terror definitely works and even it is one of the most compulsory methods of war. Without rejecting violence and terror in principle, we planned the direct participation of the masses and ensured that various forms of violence are used to ensure their participation. Lenin teaches his followers who to attack and where. Killing police, military members, officers of the state, starting fires in governmental institutions, taking money from the state treasury. The revolutionist communist forces must appear as an invincible armed force spreading fear by killing people, blasting buildings, and thus founding the communist dictatorship upon the people must be the most important elements in attaining communist dictatorship. What we are concerned with is the armed struggle. This struggle must be carried out by individuals and small groups. Armed struggle has two different goals that have to be absolutely distinguished from one another. First, this struggle aims to assassinate individuals, leaders, and members of the military and police officers. Secondly, it confiscates both governmental and personal money and assets. Lenin frequently humiliated some social democrats and some communists who were against violence and stated that they were unable to understand the most basic elements of communist ideology. A Marxist bases himself on the class struggle, not on social peace. In some certain political and financial downturns, the class struggle progresses directly towards a civil war, an armed struggle between both sides. In such a period, Marxists must side with civil war. The Marxist point of view never accepts any moral accusation regarding civil war. I ask myself, do these fellows really know what they are talking about? When I see social democrats proudly say, we are not anarchists, thieves, burglars, we are much above them, we do not accept a guerrilla war. According to communist ideology, the number of people resorting to terror does not need to be overwhelming or even large. A handful of people can direct the masses. This can be ensured through means of powerful propaganda. Lenin says this as follows. The number of such troops, with a number ranging between 25 to 75, can be increased to a few dozen in big cities and suburbs. Hundreds of workers will join these troops. The propaganda of this must be promptly initiated, troops must be established, and they have to be equipped with all sorts of weapons from blade to gun and bomb, and these troops must undergo military education. This is an understanding of revolution that both ensures the masses uprising and also constantly instigates violence and savagery. If the masses do not riot by themselves, we cannot initiate anything. As long as we do not employ terror against the speculators and shoot them in the head at that very moment, we cannot obtain any results. This is the outlook of those who dream about a bloody red revolution for the world. Ruthlessness, terror, and anarchy are indispensable. In an environment where such a dark mindset prevails, brotherhood, peace, friendship, love, justice, and equality does not and cannot exist. An ideology that does not consider a person as a being having a soul and only regards him as a kind of production tool, a machine, cannot bring about beauty, ease, comfort, and joy to people. 
People must have a better grasp of communist terror's dark face, and they have to be cautious against the anarchy, which is all too often instigated by illegal communist organizations. This century is not the century of the bloody games of the Antichrist, but rather the time when the spirit of love, which is the command of the Quran, shall prevail. <laughs>